when you experience so many bad things, like, it's hard to believe that there's a lot of good things out there, you know? So I was kind of, like, wondering to myself, like, oh, like, what's going to go on? Like, you know, like, like, what bad thing is going to happen? <laughs> I aged out in 2016, and whenever I aged out, uh, I wasn't sure where I was going to go, and I had a friend from high school who, um, her parents wanted to adopt me, but for some reason I was never told um, I wasn't allowed to be adopted by them. They were trying to take money from me because children in foster care, whenever you go to college, you get paid if you're going to college and you're doing well. Um, they were telling me that I needed to give them 75% um, of that money uh, whenever I get my checks and stuff like that. So I opted into not going and then one day they just up and left the house and told me I needed to figure out where to go. I met my ex at a party and he was also homeless and knew how to be homeless. And his mom was also homeless and they stayed in a car together. So. I started hanging out with them. We would stay in hotels and um, just be homeless together, I guess. At a certain point, I messaged my dad, who I hadn't spoken to, you know, since before my mom died. And I knew he was a drug addict, but I also knew that, like, um, I could probably just reach out to him and ask him, like, can we come stay there? And um, he said yes. He was living in a... Um, uh, the only word I know for it is a trap house. He was living in a, like, in a place where they sold drugs. From there, things got um, kind of progressively worse. Like, I started dabbling in drugs. My dad smoked crack, and he got my boyfriend at the time to start smoking crack. And um, then I found out I was pregnant, and uh, my ex and I, we had a lot of problems. We would constantly fight and stuff like that, and they kicked us out. Um, and again, we had nowhere to go, so he called his dad, who he hadn't spoken to in a very long time, and his dad set up a placement in New York for us. Um, and that's whenever I stopped being homeless, you know, like, we went to New York together. And I had told him before we left, like, hey, if you're doing drugs, whenever we're there, I'm leaving. But unfortunately, I did not have the strength to leave. Once my daughter was born, things continued to get worse until a point where it wasn't just mental abuse or fighting. It started getting physical. And it wasn't only physical towards me. It was physical towards my daughter as well. I wouldn't tell anybody about anything just because, like, I felt like... You know, what's the point? It got to a point where he tried to take my daughter. I messaged a longtime friend and she got us a ticket out and back to Florida. My father had recently passed away. He was my only ticket out. Like, he was the only person in my life that I could, you know, say, hey, can you, um, can you help me? Um, he, had, he had recently died of um, a drug overdose. His heart exploded. I called the people that whenever I was 18, I was living with them because I needed the old address for my ID and um, they were like, well, come home. And they made it sound so wonderful and nice and um, it felt like, you know, my daughter and I could be safe. Well, they picked us up, we came back and um, then I started realizing s slowly but surely like uh, why, you know, I had left that situation in the first place. There was a lot of like mental abuse going on. Um, I couldn't trust them to watch my daughter because um, even around me they would uh, like abuse her, like they would scream at her, they would, uh, you know, like I would come home and it would be the same situation as it was, you know, when uh, her father was watching her, like, you know, she hadn't been taken care of. I couldn't get a job there because nobody wanted to help with childcare. I couldn't get childcare because I didn't have a job. I was perpetually stuck in this state of limbo where I couldn't do anything to get out of the situation. And then they would consistently make the situation worse and tell me it's my fault that the situation is getting worse. But nobody was around me to help me. And whenever you don't have the resources to do what you need to do, there's like, you, you, you can't do it. You know what I mean?
So I was in contact with my friend Jackie, who was a former resident here, and I was saying, hey, like, I can't stay here. You're the only other person that I know. Um, is there any possible way that we could stay with you? And she told me, oh, well, I used to be a part of this program called Legacy Housing. It's really great. Um, I can maybe get in contact with Simone and see if, you know, we can get you started on that. Um, she gave me the phone number and I called Meredith um, on the phone with Meredith. Um, <laughs> I actually just like broke down crying. I was like, please help me. <laughs> like, I don't even know what to do here, you know. My friend Jackie took us in for a couple of weeks and that's when I was introduced to Legacy Home. It was like shockingly kind. It sounded like everybody understood, you know. I was, I was definitely scared though because um, when you like, when you experience so many bad things, like it's hard to believe that there's a lot of good things out there, you know? So I was kind of like wondering to myself, like, oh, like what's gonna go on? Like, you know, like, like what bad thing is gonna happen? <laughs> but um, everybody was super kind and it was very shocking. I was almost like terrified the first time I was sitting in here. I was like, what is going on here? <laughs> this is weird. <laughs> Simona had done a food order and randomly she just has a pack of diapers there. And she was like, hey, here, these are for your daughter. <laughs> and I was like, wait, what? <laughs> you got diapers for her? And she was like, yeah, like, why not? Like, we just want to make sure that you guys have everything. And I was like, oh, wow, that's, like, really cool of you. Because, like, I obviously did not have the money or the resources to be able to even buy my daughter diapers. But, like, that was, like, really cool, you know? I don't know. And then just, like, the abundance, like, not having to worry about, like, my daughter having a healthy meal, like, or food in general, like, you know, like... The fact that there's an abundance to the point where she can have a f like a full nutrient meal like that was absolutely amazing to me and that's one of the, one of the biggest worries in a parent's life is making sure that they're clothed, fed, you know, bathed and like have a place to sleep and all of those things were here and it's like they weren't, you know, none of this stuff was being held over my head. Like nobody made fun of me. Everybody actually kind of treats me like I'm a person <laughs> you know that was shocking I think I have hope you know um, I got a job um, I feel like I'm able to go to work and there's not a point in my day where I'm worrying like is my is my daughter okay like is something awful happening at home like I'm excited to come home and see everybody and talk to everybody like I feel like this is the first time in years where I've been able to have like be happy I was you know told by somebody that I look up to like you know I believe that you could do anything <laughs> I am truly grateful for everything that is happening here in this home I am so happy to be a part of Legacy Home and the family that they have because that is something that I have wanted my entire life and I have n never felt that before coming here and being able to experience it. Having my daughter experiencing being able to look forward to seeing her friends every day. I can come and hang out and talk on the couch with, you know, Simone and the girls at night and we can have our conversations and our you know, fun girl time. That's something I've never like experienced, or at least I have not in a very long time. And it's really heartwarming and it can literally save somebody's life, <laughs> you know? I love going to church. I love seeing Nina. I think Nina's really cool. She's like always ready to compliment somebody on something and I'm the same way. So we get together and we just start talking about things that we like and it's nice to have other people around that are so nice. 
fact, one day when I was coming home from work, I have Google Maps on my phone so that I can get home because, of course, I don't know the area. Um, I'm riding on my bike and it's telling me your destination is 600 feet to the right. I get here and it says welcome home and I literally started crying on the street. People, people probably thought I was crazy, but <laughs> it just felt so right, you know, like, and hearing that, like, I don't know, was, was pretty great. Uh, there's been a lot of points in my life in the recent, in the recent years where I've thought to myself, the only way I'm going to get out of this is if I die. And so being here, it's like, I have a chance. My family has a chance. My daughter has a chance. I have a chance. And I can continue forward. I look forward to learning how to drive like, you know, a normal adult. Um, I look forward to getting a car. I look forward to meeting new people. I look forward to making friends. I look forward to coming back here whenever I finally do graduate and like being able to see you guys and tell you all the great things that I'm doing in my life. <laughs> and I look forward to Gara having the stable people in her life that she always knows are going to be a part of her life. And making my guardian and Lydum proud. <laughs> you know. There's a lot of hardships in life. There's a lot of things that are really tough. There's 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 gonna be points where you feel like there's no coming back and that there's nothing else out there left for you. And if you're trying to do it on your own, it is so hard. It's unbelievably hard. I thought I was tough, and I'm not that tough. The world is a scary place, but <laughs> this home offers warmth, love, grace, a legacy, <laughs> um, and it, it offers the help in the future that you're looking for. Um, don't take it for granted and don't leave it in the dust because there's nothing else like this out there. This is truly something different. <laughs> my name is Daisy and this is my aging out story. You can learn more or give online at LegacyHousingProject.com.